Serious, what is the creepiest or most unexplained thing that's happened to you that you still think about to this day? Was camping alone in a small one-person tent. All snug and secure in the tent, I went to sleep. Was woken by a clap of thunder at 3 a.m., to discover both the inner and outer tent door was wide open. That was freaky. I was living in Boston. I woke up at 3 a.m. or so by my cat jumping up on my bed and curling in between my calf muscles and going to sleep. My cat would do this every night since I was 5 years old. That was his spot. It was something I was very familiar with. Thing is, my cat was living with my parents on the west coast. So I couldn't understand what the hell I just felt. But I knew it was my cat. I just figured I was dreaming. Got a call from my parents the following morning that my cat died around midnight the previous night. 3 hours behind since I was on the east coast. Guess that was my cat traveling to Boston to come see me one last time. Edit. After so many replies, I got to say this. Really, I wasn't dreaming. I remember it quite well. I said maybe I was dreaming because I am doubtful myself. But thinking back. Yeah I was wide awake and realized my experience. Despite being a fun believer in ghosts, suspension of disbelief, I haven't had any other experiences other than this. This is my own experience and I expect and appreciate the doubt. But call it what you will. I fell asleep on the couch and got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. Once I got there I realized I didn't have to go. I headed towards the bedroom but decided to turn around and go back downstairs to the couch. When I got there I saw my body still asleep curled up on the sofa. I don't remember what happened after, and I know it had to have just been a dream, but, it still freaks me out to this day to think about it. Maybe around age 14, early 90s. We were traveling from DX up to Tacoma, Washington. We were about out of money, almost out of gas, no food, stuck in Chico, California. I sat in the car while mom took my younger sisters to the restroom at a gas station. I was riddled with anxiety about our situation and looking down. The car door opened and I looked up. A lady that looked like a brown-haired Brady mom sat in the seat and faced me. She said it seems like you're down on your luck. Take this and give it to your mom. Tell her to pay it forward someday to someone who needs it. I looked down into my hand and there was a $100 bill. I looked up and she had disappeared. Nowhere in the parking lot, just vanished. I cried. When mom came back I told her what happened and she cried. We got gas. There was a guy selling oranges on the side of the road and we bought a bag and went to a local park that had a part of the river with a little spillway dam and went swimming and ate oranges for a couple of hours before getting back on the road. I never saw the lady again but she saved us and we did make it up to Tacoma to start our new life. Thank you stranger lady with invisible powers, we never forgot your kindness. In college I was roommates with my childhood best friend for about two years. We are very trusting with each other. We would go into each other's rooms freely and grab whatever we needed. To borrow clothes, hairbrush, perfume, etc. No questions asked, just a knock if we were in the room to let each other know we were going in. Our rooms are across the hall from each other, with the hall facing the kitchen. So from the kitchen you could see down the hall where our rooms were. At the time my friend had very long black hair and she's very fair skinned. One day, I get home from work, with my headphones in my ear talking to my mom about my day. I go in the kitchen and grab a snack. I see her walk out of her room and go into mine, leave my room and go back into hers. She looked like she just got out the shower, her hair was soaking wet and she was wrapped in a white towel. Her long black wet hair is what I distinctly remember. Also, she made no eye contact with me but I didn't think it was weird. I didn't say anything to her since borrowing each other's stuff was normal. I'm still on the phone with my mom so I don't think much of it. I grab my snack. Hang up with my mom and go into my room to watch TV. I figured she's getting ready to go somewhere and we'll talk later. About an hour passes and I go to the kitchen to clean the plate I ate on. I see her in the kitchen making something to eat and I tell her, Hey, what did you grab from my room earlier? Did you find what you needed? She looks at me like if I was crazy and says, What are you talking about? So I say, Yeah, earlier when I got home I saw you go into my room and grab something. Did you get what you needed? Sorry I didn't say hi I was on the phone with my mom. She asks me if I'm sure I saw her. I said yes 100%. She tells me to grab my phone and go to her car ASAP, that she needs to show me something. 
I had my phone on me and she grabbed my keys from the kitchen counter along with her purse and she drags me out the front door and into her car. She then tells me she got home maybe 5 minutes before we started talking. She had spent the night at her boyfriend's and hadn't been home all day. So she has no idea who I saw. I'll never forget the look on her face when she told me this. Complete fear and panic. She called the cops and they came along with the apartment manager. They checked the whole apartment and found no one, nothing amiss. And they were in there while checking every nook and cranny. The manager got maintenance to change our locks and gave us new keys that day. My friend then tells me that for a week she'd been hearing noises from her bathroom like bottles moving, and when she went to check she found nothing. I have no idea who I saw going in and out of our rooms, but it looked exactly like my friend. I don't drink or do drugs. Not on meds. This was in 2014 and I still freak out when I think about it. I had a recurring nightmare of a pitch black parasite sucking the life out of me. Sometimes it waited for me in dark corners to go to bed. My cats always slept on my bed during that time. For me it was a very stressful time, I got an itch at the place of my chest where I dreamed the parasite was sucking my life out of me. I got sick and felt a pea-sized lump. I went to my doc and they ordered a biopsy of that lump. As it turned out I had male breast cancer at the age of 28. After I got well again the dream never came back and my cats slept in their places again and not on my bed. The dream was creepy enough what it made for me were my cats protecting me. I ran out of gas once on the freeway and was walking to a nearby exit. Some scruffy looking guy pulled over and asked if I wanted a ride. I almost did, I was young and dumb and fearless, but my survival instinct finally kicked in and I told him I just walk. He persisted, saying there were no gas stations off that exit. I finally told him to get off, when I got to the exit there were like 4 gas stations right in view. I shudder to think what might have happened if I had gotten into that car. I once woke up in a tent in the middle of the night while camping in the upper peninsula with my friends. I heard this dude shouting and screaming about a bear, telling it to fck off and stuff. Naturally I woke my buddy up and told him what was up and he said he could hear it too. We got out of our tent and searched for almost an hour around the campsite and found nothing, then proceeded to find a Red Wings hat that was neither of ours. We took watch turns the rest of the night. And I'm pretty sure he still has the hat to this day. Note. Up is a term used by people familiar with Michigan as the Upper Peninsula, the arrow-looking thing above the mitten. I once caught my neighbor staring at me outside my bedroom window while I was straightening my hair with no trousers on, and I immediately ducked under my window pane as soon as I saw him. He was legit stood in this alleyway that connects the street's back gardens, arms crossed in there for at least 15 more minutes just staring through my window. I even got a picture of it, pretty sure I was 15. Once I was hired to load firewood into my aunt's basement. She lives alone and left the basement door open for me while she went out. I usually swing the interior basement door as wide as I can when I walk in and the door almost never closes completely but once I heard it close and when I was about to grab another load I saw that the deadbolt locked. When I walk in my arms are filled with firewood so I wouldn't be able to lock it myself. Looked out the window and checked the garage to see if she came home but she wasn't there. The door itself was enclosed so no wind to shut it. I tried various ways of slamming the door so it would lock by itself but nothing worked. It's an isolated house so I would have heard someone drive up and it's highly unlikely someone walked over just to lock the door and leave and time it while I was piling up firewood and there's wooden steps so I would have heard someone walking down them. It's the only time I've seen a deadbolt lock itself in my life. My brother had an experience of things moving in an unexplained way. He was working at our house because he kept a vintage car in our garage. It was a detached garage in a gated yard and he was totally alone at the house. He's working away and all of a sudden his toolbox moved across the floor. He was totally freaked out and packed up and left ASAP. That house was odd, it was Edwardian and quite big. We had a couple of other odd happenings. A friend was very scared of an attic bedroom in that house, it did have a weird feel about it and nobody ever wanted to sleep in there. My father-in-law also saw a figure walk behind him in a mirror and I saw a figure in our bedroom, it was a child standing by my bed, we have only lived in modern houses since and I'm back to being skeptical about hauntings and hoping all of those events can be explained. Just a normal Saturday night, I was watching TV home alone with my two dogs, when I heard a banging sound coming from the basement. Legit sounded like somebody was just banging something on the appliances we had down there, 
Now there is no access into the basement from down there, only through the upstairs rooms that I was in and knew nobody could have come in and got past me, so with this knowledge I was not as scared as you may think, more curious as to what the heck the noise was. One of the two dogs who is a meathead and wants to fight everybody also heard the noise and was now bolting down into the basement to investigate. I get down and see that it is my other dog, banging his head into our dryer and chest freezer which are next to each other. My meathead dog is just stood there watching confused. So I approach my other dog and calm him down and we all go back upstairs. Now this freaked the heck out of me and upset me as it seems such very strange behavior for my dog to do. Fast forward only 30 minutes or so, the banging starts again. I instantly look over to my dog, but he is lay down, but now also aware of the noise downstairs. We run down into the basement and it is Meathead now banging his head in between the appliances. Again, I now calm Meathead down and we all go back upstairs. Nothing has ever happened again since that night, three years now so that ruled out brain tumors which is what I read online about why maybe dogs bang their heads, but two dogs, suddenly on the same night, and it only affecting one of them at any given time, three years and the three of us never talk about that night lol, edit. A few folks say it may have been a rodent slash treat slash toy they were after, no, they were frenzied and hyperventilating, when they get things stuck under anything they just cry and get me to get their stuff, I guess it boils down to just knowing your dogs. I know instantly from their body language, just what the deal is, but that night, I have never seen them so frenzied and upset. Also, it is otherwise a very nice basement, as basements go, I have never had a pest problem down there or in any other part of the house. Somebody mentioned that if it only happened 3 years ago, why did I not make a video of it? My first instinct was to help my dogs to stop them harming themselves, at no point was my first thought to go and grab my phone to capture the moments on film really surprised I have to mention that one. But people slash keyboard slash warriors. I apologize for grammar of spelling mistakes. There was a kid in another class at my school in 6th grade that was genius. I don't mean like, oh he's really smart cause doesn't need to do the homework and still gets a 100s. Like he's was doing advanced calculus with a local college professor after school. This kid was smarter than everyone, so one day our computer system for the entire school goes down. I was in a poorer area at the time so this was normal. This was occurred many times so normally it would affect us cause we barely used laptops and such. The only class that was affected was the computer class. This kid was in the computer class, 3 or so hours later when I'm class with him during social studies. 3 guys with FBI jackets on and our local chief escorted him out of the building. We were told nothing, the parents were told nothing. It never hit the news. To this day we have no clue what he did. Except every single teacher I've asked about this says they were also told nothing. I haven't seen the kid since and I can't find a trace of him going to any other school or ending up in trouble. He just fell of the face of the earth with his parents. Yeah I forgot to mention that parents also disappeared and no one really looked for them after a month or so. I still think about that kid. My brother was a kid like this. We lived really rural but he was always building himself computers and stealing electricity from neighbors and schools getting in trouble for messing with computers at school all the time, etc. Very gifted with programming and robotics. He was always up to something. One day when he was around 16 or 17 two stent guys in official looking suits showed up to talk to him and my mom. At our homestead. In rural Alaska, an hour out of the nearest town, they never talked afterwards about what the man wanted but my mom made him throw out all his computer stuff and he was grounded for a long time. A year later, out of nowhere he was offered a full ride scholarship to MIT with some promises of jobs, my mom made a huge deal out of it. He had a pregnant girlfriend by then and opted to move with her to Kansas instead. I've asked him a few times since what the government guys had talked to him about but he just clams up, my grandmother and her sister. Both are widows. My great aunt lost her husband over 20 years ago and my grandfather passed just over 17 years ago. Every few months both my grandmother and her sister's phone will ring at midnight. Just one ring and then it's over. The caller ID will show their late husband's names. Now, it could be that the phone company is testing something or there is a glitch with the phone and that causes the phones to ring. The caller ID would be their husband's name since all their utilities are still in their husband's names. But I've never had a landline that did that in the 20 or so years my family had one and I've never heard of it happening. Somewhat related. My mom has a dream every year where she gets a phone call to heaven to speak to her father. 
usually around his birthday. My Nana, Great Grandma, and Mum were very close but lived overseas from one another my whole life. They talked on the phone every Sunday, but because it was an international call, it was extremely expensive, so they took turns calling every Sunday at 8 a.m. to make the cost equal. However due to a 4 minute difference in clocks, Nana always ended up calling at 8.04. Also, the caller ID never showed up, Mum called on a Sunday, Nana died on a Tuesday. The following week, we're sitting at the table eating breakfast, and Mum notices it's 7.50 a.m., Nana would have been calling any minute. She gets emotional, I comfort her. Then at 8.04 a.m. the phone rings. The called ID reads unknown caller. We look at each other like, what is this some sort of sick joke? She answers, there's nothing but static at the other line, and some garbled voice recording. The only decipherable words in it are, we hope you enjoy your trip to paradise. Click, phone cuts off. Absolutely no explanation for that one. Still baffles me to this day. Edit. I've been wanting to tell this story for years now but every time I find a creepy slash inexplicable thread it gets buried. So glad people are finally hearing this one lol. Some have said maybe someone was playing an elaborate prank, but I'd prefer to see it as Nana sending us one last hurrah. She really loved my mom and I a lot, as we did her, too. She was a really kooky lady and this ending was extremely fitting of her. I woke up in the bath at a very specific time, like 5.45 twice. 10 years in between. Water was getting cold, I was naked. No memory of getting there. Some fragments of like seeing my own hand turning on the tap. No drugs or alcohol or even medication involved. The worst thing was the fear. When I woke up I felt an inexplicable, almost primordial, dread. Lasted for hours, I was shaking, couldn't function. Still freaks me out thinking about it. Might have been three times I can't remember properly. I still get the shakes from the memory. Right after quarantine started I got a package in the mail. It was addressed to my name and my address and contained one pink starburst and nothing else. To this day, I have no idea who sent it or why. The return address was a vacant office space across the country. Edit. I did not eat it. The postmark matched the address I believe but it's been so long I'm not positive. There is one friend I'm thinking could have done it but she has since passed away. It was not sent from overseas, it uses my full name which I don't go by for anything except legal documents, I have a nickname I use almost exclusively, we had only been in this house for 8 months before I got this and we didn't slash don't really know our neighbors, and my Amazon account is under my husband's information. And thank you for the awards. I was driving home from work on a long somewhat dark road. I'll admit I was tired and cold and just wanted to get home. Speed limit was 60 miles per hour and I was doing closer to 70. Suddenly, a girl with long blonde hair, a black coat with brown fur on the hood and jeans just showed up in front of my car. I knew there was another car to my left up ahead but it was black and all I saw was that it was stopped before I saw her. I managed to maneuver around her. I was freaked out, I turned to a side street and stopped to figure out what was happening. Then a tall guy with a black coat and short hair gets out of the driver's side of the stopped car, grabbed her dragged her to the car while she was fighting him, and put her back in the car. I called the police and gave them the description of the car and the direction it took off in. I never heard anything about it, and I have not stopped thinking about her since. It's been two years. Edit. Just in case anyone is curious or could even know something, the location was Lincoln, Rhode Island, US next to the high school. Jan slash February 2019. The car was a new black sports, maybe car with a tail light going all the way across the back of the car. George Washington Highway. I was exploring the area behind my house shortly after we moved in. The area back there had once been a small quarry that had since filled with water. It was a pit of pond that supposedly went straight down 60 feet if you stepped into it. I was walking along the edge and I came across a backpack filled with old video game cartridges and a set of clothing just laying on the ground. They were for the N64 and we found this around 2004 so they were outdated. Next to it was a set of clothing. The clothes were laying on the ground, spread out, pants and shirt, so it looked like someone laying down. They looked like they'd been there a long time. Same with the backpack. I told my parents and they called the cops, there had been no reports of missing children or anything in the area. We never got an explanation but it was weird, edit, just to answer some questions. I don't think it was a prank. While we were new to the neighborhood, 
We were renters. Also most of our neighbors were elderly. This happened in a rural Virginia town and I can't imagine anyone wasting cartridges like that since most kids were lucky to have an N64. No people adult or child had been reported by families or the neighborhood as missing for years. They never searched the quarry because they never had any reason to think there was something wrong. My sister and I went out there every day for a year or so and just avoided that spot because I was creepy. As far as I know, they're still out there. I was deployed to Iraq and we stayed in a former prison in Baghdad. During the night we would see and hear strange things. The base at this time only had soldiers but we would hear children playing from inside the prison. One day we decided to dig deeper to see where the kids were. When we finally found where the noise was coming from we found a room with a ceiling caved in. We didn't find any kids but found kids books, toys and kids clothes. Everything looked like it wasn't moved in weeks. We continued to hear the kids in the year we spent there. My girlfriend and I are in a long-distance relationship. We typically take turns traveling between each other's countries, Australia and Canada. About two years ago, it was my turn to travel over to Australia to stay with her and her mom. For a bit of background, my GF's room was built as an extension slash add-on to their garage. So to get to it, you had to walk through their garage to get to her room. About a couple weeks into my trip over there, I wake up at around 1 AM and the room is just glowing red. I look up at the ceiling and I see this black figure crawling through the ceiling. It moved in such an inhuman way, almost like it was breaking every one of its bones to move. I start screaming which wakes my GF up and she looks up at the ceiling and starts to scream as well. Instinctively, I grab my pillow and whip it at the figure. The next thing I know everything went black and I'm waking up a few hours later. My GF is fast asleep so I think it was just some weird dream. At that point, I have to go to the washroom. So, I walk through the garage and try to quietly open the garage door to get into the main house. Previously, her mom had mentioned that she was getting annoyed with us staying up late at night and going through the garage door to use the washroom. Since her mom's room was down the garage door hallway, each time we would open it, the door would click loudly and wake her up. So, I'm standing there at the garage door and I try to open it as quietly as possible. As I turn the handle and the door clicks as I push it open, her mom just starts screaming at the top of her lungs. I thought it was out of rage for waking her up, so I immediately close the door and speed walk back to my GF's room. I climb into bed and gently nudge her awake to tell her that her mom is screaming. She gets up and goes to see whether her mom was still angry and try to de-escalate the situation. About 20 minutes goes by and my GF comes back into the room completely silent. She asks me if I saw the room glowing red earlier as well as a figure in the ceiling. I say yes and she goes wide-eyed and says that she thought it was just a dream too. She then says that her mom wasn't screaming at me. Apparently, when I opened the door, it did wake her up, but when she woke up, there was a black figure standing at the foot of her bed and it was slowly moving towards her. She then experienced a blackout as well and was woken up by my GF checking in on her. Yeah. The entire house slept with the lights on for a month after that. The bit about it crawling up the bed is the worst part. How terrifying. Once in a hotel, my friend and I in separate beds, she woke up screaming and ranting something was crawling up from the bottom of the bed. I thought she meant a bug and she said no a person with a demon's face. She turned on the lights and even looked under the bed and when I tell you the chills it gave me. No drinking or drugs involved before, or sleep for me after. I'm just glad it chose her bed. I was about 10 when this took place. I'm in my early 30s now. I remember it was well into late night hours when I saw my grandmother was standing at the front screen door looking outside. She was talking to someone. I saw she was talking to my dad. I couldn't see my dad's face cause he was facing away from her. He was shirtless. He had a very large distinct mole in the middle of his back, so I knew it was him. He was mumbling something I couldn't understand. My grandmother was telling him something along the lines of if you love them so much why did you go and do this? My mom wasn't there with us to see this. She had left moments before after she got a call letting us know my dad had been driving drunk and hit a mule on the highway. My dad was in the hospital hanging on to life. I had a schnauzer that could hear a cat stalk across a Persian rug. The slightest noise could wake her from a slumber and set off her constant barking. She made a great tent companion while on backpacking trips. Bears, raccoons and skunks would all get fair warning if they came within range of out campsite. 
One morning we woke up from a night without interruptions in the back country of SW Colorado and I found my tent's central guy line was no longer staked down by the aluminum stake that I had used but instead by a piece of aspen branch that had been carved into what looked like a dinky statue. Nothing too ornate but a snarling face with teeth had been carved from the bark and it had obviously been heated in a fire to give it a brown color. My dog didn't make a sound and I apparently slept harder than I thought. I scrambled out of the tent and looked around the small alpine lake and saw no other campers nor any sign that people had been around. Cut my trip short and hauled ass the 8 miles back to my car. Not a single other car in the lot at the trailhead. Well, not the scariest thing ever but when I was 11 my family and I moved to another town because of my dad's job. We were only going to stay there for a year, and thankfully we were given a house in a closed community of about 20 houses made for army officials and their families. So one day my parents are out and they take my baby sister, my older sister is in a friend's house and I'm left alone with our dog for like 2 hours. I was playing in my room when I remember that the black socks for my Monday uniform kind of like a suit you wear on Mondays, are drying in the backyard. I go there with my dog and utter out loud I wish there was something to do and not a moment later I hear some young voice say very clearly then let's play. I turn around to see my normally hyperactive golden sitting looking at me like nothing has happened. I freak out immediately and ran upstairs to my parents' bedroom, I turn on the TV and hide under the covers until my family arrived, they saw me sweating, scared and paranoid at this point. They never figured out what happened but tried to make me feel better, now the part that freaks me is that each of the houses in the community was surrounded by 3 meter tall cinder block walls, the place where my socks were was next to a wall separating from another house, one that had no children. The other house to the left was over 20 meters away and behind another wall, and the wall behind my house separated us from nothing but a steep hill. There was no one who could have said that, and to this day it freaks me out every time I think of it. When I was in high school, I would always be the first to arrive home out of my family, having the entire house to myself. I've never been superstitious or someone who scared easily, and the hour I had alone was my favorite time of the entire day. My bedroom is upstairs, and one day when I got home from school I placed my bag away and started up the stairs. About halfway I stopped because I thought I heard something coming from upstairs so I stayed and listened. I heard a very slow rendition of the melody from Ring Around the Rosy, crystal clear, coming from my bedroom. I was 100% sure I was the only one home, and I had absolutely no device that could be playing music unprompted especially ring around the rosy, I froze in fear and listened for about 15 seconds to make sure I was really hearing it, which I was. I just turned back down the steps and waited around in the living room for my family to get home before I went back upstairs. I went in my room a few hours later and there was nothing out of the ordinary. I know it's not a very climatic story, but it's something I think about every now and then. I never told anyone about it because, why would I? But that was the first time something truly strange happened to me. I was putting my daughter to bed, and she was talking about her mother, because we were reading a book that her mother had gotten her. Her mother died in 2019, of breast cancer. She was my very best friend, more like a sister, and she doted on my daughter. We are reminiscing about her, and my daughter's twinkle lights she has on her ceiling starts going off. They have multiple settings and they are on the rainbow setting. Not too weird. Maybe they have a short or something. I go to turn them off. They aren't plugged in. I figure it's my friend saying hi. She loved rainbows. I'm not superstitious, but she promised to stick around and haunt us. I find it comforting. Those lights still go off every now and then. My cat used to visit me after he passed away. I could see him move in the corner of my eye, just at the edge of my vision. Or I could feel his head pressing against my chin like he used to. This went on for years, and basically stopped when we moved. I miss him. One of my cats had been missing for a few weeks. I had given her up as gone. While on the phone with a friend 100 miles away, who has never seen my house, he interrupts himself from talking about work and says with a strange urgency, Doug. Open your front door. Your cat is sitting on the porch waiting to come in. And of course upon opening the door, I find her just casually sitting there. We were both beyond blown away. Between sobs of joy I asked how did you know? And he said, I don't know man. That was really weird. We had a rescue dog years back, Terrier Mix. We lived in the countryside on a wooded hillside and owned about 5 acres of woodland and rough fields mostly wild. 
This dog loved to be up there chasing rabbits but loved her home too so would never be gone for very long. One day she went missing. We took our other dogs up there and searched thoroughly but nothing, we had another friend bring his dogs, nothing. We advertised, put up posters, we did little but search high and low for six days but nothing. On the sixth day we had pretty much given up hope but I decided to go up one last time because I had a hunch, a tickle in my belly, about one particular area which had already been thoroughly searched, I took a sickle and a pair of gardening gloves and hacked my way towards the center of a huge bramble patch. It was summer and all I could hear was bird song and insects, but suddenly I heard a muffled yip. I called her name and then heard her again getting excited. She was deep underground in a rabbit warren. I stayed calling to her until help arrived, the local fire brigade were kind enough to come and help and advise and we got her out eventually. She ran around like a demented muddy pup and amazingly the vet said she was basically okay, had probably been getting enough moisture from eating mud to keep her alive. I am not generally a fanciful person, but I just knew in my knower she was there, no explanation for it. Not creepy as such, more just unexplained. As a kid I was round a friend's house after school. It was a sunny day so we went to the park near his house, then through the woods there. His younger brother was with us as well, in the woods, beside the path, there were red berries on the ground. The berries had been arranged into three stick figures, which was weird as there were three of us. We got back to the house, and my friend and I decided to go back to take another look, his brother stayed at the house. When we got back there were only two stick figures, my friend snapped a photo on his phone then kicked the berries and we ran back to the house. I have no idea what was going on, was it just some kind of prank being pulled on us? I had a short lucid dream. And the scene happened a few days later, I am 200% sure about that because I keep a diary of my dreams, and it matched perfectly. In high school, AOL was new and chat rooms were super popular. I was 16 when we finally got the first PC and AOL and the whole works. Creepy old men would lurk in generally teenage run chat rooms because. Creepy old men, some guy started messaging me, he was in his late 30s, but it was the internet, who knows if he really was. He could have been 78 for all anyone knew. I was a teenage girl, why would I be interested? So I told him to not talk to me. He then made a fake account claiming he was a teenage boy but then he started talking like he did before and I caught on. Why so much effort to talk to a plain 16 year old, I filed complaints but only so much can happen when he hasn't really done anything illegal. Whatever. So one day, my parents are out and my brother is gone. The home phone rings and it's him. He tells me he knows I'm alone, my parents are out, he knows what my house looks like, he describes it over the phone. He tells me he could easily come to me if I asked him, I told him I'm not amused and to just stop. He disappeared after. No idea. It was just, weird. Still no clue. We used to have a night out every Christmas with the lads from high school. We went back to one of the lads houses and were all drunk having a good time when one of the lads pointed into the kitchen and said who's that, the kitchen was like a box room you could see the whole room from the doorway. I had my back to the wall where it was and turned to look in, the lights were off and there was no one there. We all looked and said what are you looking at? He was adamant and just stayed sat pointing and just said no who are those two there, the lad whose house it was was looking in and turned on the light and again there was no one there, and we all said are you okay, what are you on about, he said look that fella is leaning on the worktop and the other is leaning and pointing and laughing at me, we all kept saying there was no one there, after a back and forth for about 10 minutes, he was describing what they were wearing etc and then the lad who could see these people realized we couldn't and started freaking out, tearing up and shaking uncontrollably saying he had to get out of the house. He was shaking that much we had to put his shoes on, once he had gone and being drunk, no drugs, that we knew of, we just laughed it off as him being off on one but the lad whose house it was said he described his uncle and granddad who had long since died exactly how they used to stand and what clothes they were wearing, I wouldn't have believed it if I wasn't there. And honestly I still think he just had a mad episode. We have all met his granddad and uncle before they died so it could have been some metal moment he had. To this day anytime we mention it he refuses to talk about it, and doesn't even entertain any notion of it. Like I said, it sounds far-fetched but that is 100% true, I don't believe in ghosts etc and still think he had a moment but it was genuinely weird and unsettling. Edit, a few people have asked so to tidy it up, this guy has no history of any mental illness or anything else.
To this day he has a stable, solid career and home life. I know that isn't always a solid indication everything is okay but after 15 or so years he's never shown anything of the sort. My mom and dad told me they had an experience before I was born. They were on a regular evening in the living room. My mom on the couch doing a crossword puzzle or something and my dad sitting on the ground messing with the radio at the opposite side. An unlit hallway connecting the living room with the rest of the house was in the middle. My mom suddenly says to my dad, M. Honey, can you look at the hallway for just a second? My dad turns his sight from the radio towards the hallway and turns completely motionless. As they both saw something. My dad explained that they saw the stature of a little boy in the back of the hallway, if that wasn't weird enough, they told me the cat they had back then, also saw something as he stopped what he was doing and just stared in the same direction. No hissing or anything, just staring. Then my dad suddenly shouting something like hey! To what he thinks he saw, where after it seemingly disappeared in an instant. I also don't believe in ghosts or anything and always try to come up with a logical explanation, like sleep paralysis and lucid dreaming and stuff. Yet this one still has me stumped to this day. A friend and I from high school used to go out to this old county road and smoke a joint on a big hill facing a large, old brick house across the street that sat in a large field. The face of the house had two rows of six windows each, facing the road. One night we were chilling on said hill and looking out at the house as the sun was going down and all of a sudden a light turned on in one of the windows and then shut off. Then another random window lit up, then shut off. It kept going. Faster, faster. A window would light up and shut off and then go to another. It did it for about a minute and eventually was doing it so quickly it couldn't have possibly been a person going room to room or even a person with access to multiple switches at one time. After about a minute after speeding up to random flashes it stopped, it simply didn't make sense. We both saw it. We talked about it many times afterward. The only thing we can figure is if the homeowner had some kind of automated lighting system hooked up to all the rooms and was messing with us. Other than that, I have no idea, so sketchy though. My grandma and I both saw a dead person in our laundry room once, so, the laundry connected to the kitchen by a doorway. The doorway connected to the living room, too. One afternoon, grandma needed a hamper, so I followed her to the laundry. We saw the dead person as soon as we stepped foot in the doorway. It looked to be about my height, I was six or seven-ish, and totally black. Not as in a black person but a literal black coating on its skin. It was slumped near the washing machine. We only saw it for a split second, enough time to register that it was there, and then it was gone. I remember my grandma saying did you see that? And laughing it off. She got the hamper and did her thing, and I just avoided the kitchen for a while. And on a semi-related note, I used to have the freakiest nightmares in that house. I had nightmares so graphic, so often, that my pediatrician wanted me to see a therapist. A few years ago, I was at my lowest point in life. Several people close to me had passed away unexpectedly, I was being bullied every day at my job. My life was falling apart. I was past being depressed, I just couldn't imagine waking up another day. So I'd planned my suicide, bought a one-way plane ticket, got sleeping pills, and wrote a series of suicide notes. On the day I was to fly out to fulfill my plan, there was a terrible accident on the freeway to the airport. It was shut down both ways. So I drove into a nearby pub to have a beer and wait out the traffic. The second I sat on the patio with my drink. A gentleman asked if he could sit with me. Whatever, I thought, sure, who cares. He told me that whatever I was doing next was a terrible idea and I would regret it. I thought, who is this random dude? But I listened. He said that he sensed I was in pain, but that I had an incredible life ahead of me, and that this was not the way my story was supposed to end. Again, I had never met this guy in my life, and hadn't mentioned a word to him about my plan. He asked me to hand him my keys and my wallet and he'd give them back to me after I talked and he listened. I poured my heart out to this random guy. Told him all my traumas and pains in life and why I was heading to the airport on a one-way ticket to kill myself in a cemetery across the country where my family was buried. He just listened. And then he pulled out a lighter, asked me to pull out my suicide letters and helped me burn them. He told me I was worth so much to the world and that after I finished my drink, I needed to head home and get some sleep. He told me I was going to be okay tomorrow, and I believed him. He then gave me my keys and wallet back. I left that afternoon and went home, hugged my family. Got some sleep, 
and the next day, I started working on myself, finding a therapist, a new job. Years later, I'm in a fantastic place in life, so, so far from where I was that day. To this day, no one in my life knows how close I came to killing myself. But this random stranger just somehow understood me. And saved my life, I never saw him again. I don't even know his name. It's the most unexplained thing that has ever happened to me. And I think about that guy every day, so, thank you, kind stranger, for saving my life that random September day on a pub patio. I once had it planned to jump off a bridge nearer where I live. I was dead set on killing myself. I was just out of energy and love. I had no more life to give, if that makes any sense. It was right before Christmas, and it was snowing. I stopped at hotel near the bridge to mooch off their Wi-Fi to finish my suicide notes. I was just about done when my battery died. Fine. I checked into a room to charge my laptop, as I was waiting, I began to get hungry. I felt burdened by the hunger, more annoyed than anything, so I decided to get something to eat. This hotel was located in a small town, and the only restaurant was right next door. I was over, and there was a closed sign on the door, but the lights were on, and I could hear people inside so I go in. A grey-haired man came out of the back and told me that him and the employees were having a Christmas party, but their chef could whip something up. I go into the main dining room, and wait around a while before getting up to grab myself a beer. This big black guy comes out from the kitchen and asks me what I want to eat. I tell him that a burger and fries would do, or whatever is easiest for him. I go sit down in a booth and ponder what a big black guy is doing out in the middle of nowhere. The area we were in is pretty close-minded. Anyhow, he comes out from the kitchen with a burger, fries, another beer and one for himself. He promptly sits down and joins me. My thoughts for my suicide note are promptly pushed away, as I become annoyed by his presence. He begins talking to me, telling me about his life. Just filling silence, you know? Then, he tells me that what I am about to do is a big mistake. If I don't care about living, why not do exactly what made me happy? Why not do all of the things I had been meaning to do but put off for work, for solving other people's problems? He said a lot of other things too some of which felt like he knew me and felt a bit foreboding, but in a good way, like somehow he knew that I would overcome all this suffering and lead a good life. By the end of the conversation, I was too exhausted to finish my note. I decided to finish it in the morning, when I woke up, I decided to give myself one year. Just one year to try everything that man suggested. I decided to really truly do everything I could to be happy, to really give my all to doing the things I had been putting off. I decided to walk next door and see if I could find him or at least leave him a note. When I walked in, no one knew what I was talking about. There was no Christmas party. No black guy had ever worked there and they closed at 5 p.m. the evening before due to the weather. I walked away stunned, but I couldn't really say surprised. The whole evening seemed surreal. To this day, I have no idea who that man was. I only know that I owe him my life. The changes that I made that year after I met him eventually led to me meeting my husband and having my son. We stopped there on a summer road trip this past year, and I cried when I realized how close I came to ending my life. I can't imagine not knowing my husband or my son. I think of that man often, and I call him my angel. Frankly, I don't care if he is or not, but he will always be the angel that saved my life. I hope someday I can pass it on. I used to work in a nursing home where I cared for dementia patients. Every patient on the hall I worked on would steal spoons from dinner to give to the kids because they like shiny things. It got to the point where once a week I'd have to go through everyone's room to take back the spoons. I asked the patients about the kids many times but never got a good answer. I'd hear things like they just live here or they stand outside in the snow and look in the windows or they're my friends who visit. Wouldn't be so weird if they all didn't do it, but it was everyone the ones who are still capable of speaking anyways. One time at 3 a.m. one of my patients started screaming so I ran in her room and found her laying in bed, seemingly fine. I asked what was wrong and she said that boy is here again and won't get out of my closet. I'm scared. Like me too, Dolores what the heck. I used to work in a nursing home through high school in the Midwest in a tiny ass town. I'll never forget the story of the night when four or five call lights went on one of our wings slash halls and every single one was to tell us something to the effect of the children came and rearranged the furniture. Sure enough there were chairs pushed around even in rooms where the resident wasn't able to stand on their own. 
The creepiest one was the man who was seated on the toilet and has a chair pushed up against the door. Who wasn't able to stand on his own and used a wheelchair plus someone to help him get up to it. There were more creepy stories I gained on night shift over 4 years, but that one was definitely scary even not being first hand. My personal favorite first hand experience was at various points throughout the night we heard a very distinct scream. My partner and I cleared all the rooms looking for someone in trouble, radioed the nurse and she didn't hear it at all. Later we were outside and heard it again. And she was inside and called us back in freaking out. A few hours later we had a resident go missing and we found her in an empty room in the pitch black just staring at the wall. When I was in third grade I moved to a new town and into a new house. We lived in a camper in the backyard of the house while we renovated it. It was a pretty old house. Anyway during renovation we found all sorts of stuff in the walls, old bottles, old pair of glasses, letters, old newspapers old pictures of children in school clothes. It was a two-story house and the stairs were kind of a focal point for all sorts of creepy stuff. So once you got to the top of the stairs there was a little landing before it went into two bedrooms. At night we would always leave the light on in the landing in case we had to get up to use the bathroom. Me and one brother shared a room and the other room was for our older brother. I refused to sleep upstairs due to how creeped out I was, so I always slept downstairs on the couch. One weekend my sister, who was older than both my brothers, came to visit and was in my oldest brother's bedroom alone, as we were all at school and my mom was at work. As she was sitting up there watching TV she heard footsteps coming up the stairs and called out as she had thought my mom was home early from work. No response other than the footsteps turning around and heading back down the stairs. When she got up the look there was no one home and all doors locked. It doesn't stop there. My oldest brother was left home alone for a week while me and my other brother and mom and dad went on a week-long vacation. Naturally he had his girlfriend over for a couple nights to keep him company. One night she got up to pee around 3 am and went downstairs to the bathroom where she said she heard children whispering. A couple nights later around 3 to 4 am the GF woke my brother saying someone was in the house. They heard footsteps coming up the stairs. Since the light was on in the landing. They could see a shadow underneath the door like someone was standing there. And the doorknob began to shake, luckily it was locked. They both started to freak out, and my brother jumped up out of bed. We had some of those dumb display samurai type swords that aren't even sharp and he grabbed one of those and went towards the door. They heard more footsteps running down the stairs and he bravely or stupidly followed down the stairs where he was met with an empty house. All windows and doors closed and locked. He called the police but nothing came of it. This will get buried but oh well. LOL, JK, back in 2008, I lived near my college in an apartment. My apartment was set back from the main road quite a bit and was in a wooded and hilly area. One night, I was out running near sundown. I'm at the bottom of a hill that's behind my apartment so it was near the end of my run. I look up ahead at the top of the hill and notice three guys on bikes just sitting there. Being a 20 year old female, my spidey senses start tingling. I tell myself I'm psyching myself out and it'll be fine so I keep running, I'm about halfway up the hill. The three guys are still just sitting there, facing my direction. I don't have a phone or anything and nowhere else to go so I tell myself I'll just run as hard as I can and scream if I need to. Suddenly, I hear something coming up beside me. I look to my right and see a German Shepherd. He's running alongside me. I've never seen this dog before in my life. I can't explain it. But I just knew I'd be okay now. I continued running up the hill with this random dog beside me. When we're approaching the guys, this dog gets slightly ahead of me and runs directly in front of me instead of to my right. He gets to the guys and stops dead in his tracks. I continue running and pass the guys without even making eye contact. Once I'm past the guys, the dog catches back up to me and continues running alongside me. He stays with me until I take the turn into my apartment's, very well lit, parking lot. He disappears into the trees as quickly as he appeared. I took that route at the same exact time every single day after that for weeks and would drive down that road often, hoping to come across him again. No luck. I never saw him again. My friends are all convinced he was a guardian angel making sure I stayed safe. I'm not really a believer so I DK but it's the most creepy, bizarre, and awesome thing to ever happen to me. I was probably about 16 to 17 and had just gotten home from high school. My brother was in the kitchen making a ruckus so I started that way. As I passed by his bedroom I saw my mom in there, sitting on his bed with the lights off, 
facing away from me and towards the wall. I stopped and stood in the doorway and asked if she was okay, and what she was doing. She said really slowly, just sitting, come here, I need to talk to you. I took about a half step into the room when I heard my mom yelling for me in the kitchen and then saw her setting the table. I looked back to the bedroom and there was nothing there, I don't think I ever went back into that room by myself again, even 10 years later, edit, another story from the same house, since people seem to find this one interesting, one day my mom and I were out doing yard work in the front of the house. At the time we had a trampoline that sat in front of my bedroom window, which faced the driveway slash road. My two little brothers were bouncing on it, they were probably 7 and 9 at the time, and my mom and I had sat down in a pair of lawn chairs to take break. We were watching my little brothers play when suddenly they both stopped jumping and walked to the edge of the trampoline closest to my bedroom window and sat down, facing the window. They both started talking, but they were speaking as if they were having a conversation that we were only privy to half of. The older one, S, said something like, yes, yeah, they're good, no, okay, as if he was replying to someone asking him questions. My mom and I looked at each other like are you hearing this right now? And she asked them who are you guys talking to? Without looking away from the window S said she says it's great grandma. She says she misses you, my great grandmother had died before my little brothers had been born, they had no idea what she looked like. My mom replied great grandma is in heaven baby. To which he looked over at us and said not anymore. They stared at the wall for a little longer and then started playing again as if nothing had ever happened. This was, again, one of many incidents that happened at that house. I left Florida in 2017, and while I've visited the family home many times since leaving, I'll never stay there at night by myself. And I try very hard not to leave the room I stay in. I was walking my dog once around the pond in my grandmother's condominium gated community. It was supposed to storm that night so it was windy all day. Like tree branches violently flailing around and small items being blown away, I got to the front of my grandmother building, there wasn't a soul in sight and suddenly it got really quiet. Which was weird because it was literally windy all day but the wind suddenly stopped. I sort of looked around and felt off, it was the kind of quiet you could hear. Suddenly a big gust of wind comes in and my dog starts freaking out. I tug him to come towards the building so I could put the coat in to get us inside when suddenly I hear a voice go hey right behind me. It felt like it was right next to my ear. I turned around and there still wasn't anyone there. And my dog was still freaking out, so I dragged him inside, ran up the flight of stairs to my grandma's condo and locked the door. I still have no idea what happened to this day. Edit. I should mention the gated community has a lot of buildings with geriatric folks living in it beyond my grandmother's condo. The area was used during the tuberculosis outbreak to bring patients to basically die and they would cremate their bodies in a now abandoned building at the center of the gated community. I've also seen shadows in the window of the tower whenever I went to the park nearby. A few years ago, I took my dog out for a walk at night. The apartment complex I lived in at the time had enough light outside so I was never scared of going out for a little walk. One night, as I walked down the stairs, I noticed a large brown furry thing under the stairs. I know for a fact there was three thin bushes under those stairs, but that night, whatever that thing is, was in between those bushes. I was too afraid to inspect it so I walked the dog around the neighborhood for five minutes. When I got back, the large brown thing was gone. I stood there for a second before gathering up the courage to go up the stairs. My dog, however, refused to go up, I scooped him up and ran up the stairs into the comfort of my own home. A few days later I sat in the living room minding my own business. From the corner of my eye, I saw something brown and furry crawl from the ceiling into my room. That night, I had a dream I was being attacked by an unknown creature. I covered myself in my blanket and it scratched and tore at it yelling obscenities at me. I got angry and launched myself at it, punching and scratching at a large brown furry creature. When I woke up my dog was there watching me and whining. I'd quit to even think this was, edit, I actually spoke to my mom about this. And what she said scares me even more, she has seen it crawl into rooms. But like me, chalked it up to her hair in her eye or something. However, she told me she also dreamt of it. In her dream, she was paralyzed, it was running around her and taunting her. She tried so hard to start praying but the words wouldn't come out. It got close to her face, she stared deeply into its demonic red eyes. She felt its fur touch her skin. When she broke out of her dream, 
My dog was staring at her, very close to her face. My dog almost got punched Lamau, my mom's defense when she gets scared, so yeah. I guess we did see something in that apartment. Whatever it is, I'm glad we moved out and it didn't follow us. Driving from Northern California to Southern California through the middle of the night about a decade ago, I was tired, and the scenery along the freeway through the Central Valley isn't very interesting. I remember passing an old silo, looking at my car clock and it was 3.17 in the morning, drove some more, passed a power line, and it was 3.21. I blinked, shuffled in my seat, and passed that same old silo, and it was back to 3.17. I was in disbelief. I just stared at my clock for a few moments, drove a little bit more, passed the same power line, 321. Don't know why or how, but I went backwards about 4 minutes. Never experienced anything similar or since. I woke up for some reason and I heard the hammer of a gun being pulled back in front of my face. I could hear the metal on metal and the creaking and the clicks. I opened my eyes thinking I was about to die and nothing was there. The previous owner of the house had overdosed in the living room and used to deal guns. We found some in the attic. I am a skeptic about ghosts and otherworldly beings. This event that happened causes me some consternation because it doesn't make any sense and I cannot explain what was happening. When I was in middle school, my family went camping in New Mexico. We were at a campsite near a lovely stream. My parents had one tent and my brother and I had another, as I was settling down to sleep for the night. I was listening to my headphones. I decided it was time to go to sleep so I took my headphones off and was dozing off when I became hyper aware of a sound. It was a slight swishing slash scratching sound on the side of the tent. I had just assumed there was a breeze and a stalk of grass was brushing on the side of the tent. With a sudden jolt, I realized there was no wind whatsoever. I asked my brother, Jay, what is that? He asked what I was referring to. I pointed out the scratching noise. He took his hand and hit the side of the tent. In response, whatever it was, hit the side of the tent from outside of the tent. We both immediately began screaming hysterically, my parents came running and all the while the scratching continued. My parents said it was surely just a bug, a tent string or some vegetation and got a flashlight to look at the exterior of the tent. There was nothing. They brushed down the exterior, shook the tent, took everything out of the tent and shook it. The noise continued. I was completely in pieces so I went and slept in my parents tent and my father slept in the kid tent. My brother and father reported that the scratching continued all night long. Still puzzled and freaked out by this experience. When I was about 10 years old, I had a pretty scary dream. In this dream, my mom drowned in quicksand and my little brother, 7 or 8 at the time, jumped in to save her. In the process, he broke his arm. The next day, my little brother broke his arm. No quicksand involved and my mom was never in danger Earl, but still, I was super freaked out by the fact that I had dreamt about my little brother's injury literally the night before. To this day, when I think about it, it gives me chills. I fell asleep on the couch in my apartment in Detroit, 16th floor of a high rise, not a shady area but right on the water slash international border, rife with trafficking and the like, sometime after midnight I had a feeling that something wasn't right and it woke me up. I opened my eyes only to look directly at a man standing in my entry hallway, backlit by the hallway light. He slowly backed up upon seeing me awake and closed the door. I ran to wake up my then boyfriend in the bedroom and we went out to the hall to see who it could have been, but there was no sign of him, probably a neighbor who got the wrong door, but still the creepiest thing I've ever woken up to. It was the only night our front door wasn't locked because that was always my habit, and I had fallen asleep early. The odds of that plus being all the way on the 16th floor. Was it a lost neighbor, someone checking doorknobs that night? The what ifs scare me more than anything. Driving home from work late one night I was followed and it was weird. I left the hospital and turned off the main road to a bunch of side streets I would take. At one point I noticed a car behind me that made the same left turn as me. They sped up to get behind me. I thought nothing of it. Then I briefly thought about running to 7 to 11 to grab some food and turned on my right signal, but I realized I had food at home, so I turned my signal off. The car behind me turned on their right signal and turned it off as well exactly as I had. At that point I got a bit spooked. So I turned my right signal on and they did as well. Instead at the next intersection I turned left even though my right signal was on. 
They did as well, they proceeded to follow me through a series of odd turns. Eventually I turned onto a cul-de-sac I knew about and figured I could turn around there and look at the driver to see who was following me. As I approached the end of the road they figured out what I was doing. They stopped and did a fast K turn and sped off. It was weird. Still don't know who it was. To this day, there was a kid in my class that no one else remembers. I distinctly remember playing with this kid in kindergarten, and we were pretty much inseparable. About a month past Christmas break he disappeared. No one remembered him. Not the teachers, or the others in my class. No one. I even asked the school counselor if he was okay, and she humored me by going through records to see if he'd transferred. She couldn't find a thing. I think about it at least once a month. One day I fell asleep on my sofa at noon suddenly I heard one of my friend calling through the window so I tried to get up but for some reason I couldn't move even a bit. I couldn't even call my mom who was in the kitchen. I was trying to move desperately but it felt like someone was just pulling me down. Suddenly I fell down from the sofa. I woke up realizing it was a dream, but even though I didn't actually fall my body was aching and my head was swollen. You know on cold days inside your car you can breath on the window and draw on the glass, I got in my car, and as I look at the windshield I see a few small baby hands. I thought it was strange someone would let a baby play on my car's windshield. I had an urge to touch the baby prints and as I touched it, I wiped away the hand prints. The hand prints were made from inside of my locked car. This is probably the strangest creepiest unexplained phenomena that's ever happened to me. A couple of things happened to me and my housemate when we moved into the top apartment in an old building in Europe, right next to a forest known for witchcraft. The locals even have a witch's parade every year. It's a harmless bit of fun, the apartment was huge, three bathrooms, two bedrooms, a study, two living rooms, a living space, a kitchen, two balconies. The bigger one was upstairs, across from a door to the attic, that ran across the entire house. It was dark and full of a lot of old stuff, like from a century ago, we found porcelain, really old wooden furniture, and a doll neither of us wanted to touch. There were also some children's slippers and black and white pictures of a child from when the town still had carts pulled by oxen. It was a wonderful place to live, and the cheap rent made it wonderfuller, but both of us were mildly creeped out in the beginning. We used to hear stuff while in our rooms, like banging or footsteps, or like something had fallen on the carpets. My housemate would text me did you hear that too? But she soon stopped. She never wanted to talk about it either. I guess she didn't want to give it any power by acknowledging it. I clearly remember the first time she was out. It was winter, so it got dark by 4 pm. I needed to grab groceries, so I left all the lights on to make myself feel better. I tried to look for my earphones for some music along the way, but I couldn't find them and I left without them. When I returned every single light in the house was switched off except the one in my room, and I went to my room, my earphones were lying neatly rolled on the top of my bed, a few other incidents took place while we lived there too, like the bulbs in the corridor, and only the corridor, dying with loud pops one by one, my housemate hearing something like a dog scratching at her door and texting me to let her sleep one evening while I was over at a friend's place, me hearing a door loudly banging somewhere in the house while I was on the toilet, and the banging stopping immediately as soon as I flushed, it was like it didn't realize there was someone home. The house was weirdly cold too, but we lived there for a year without anything major happening. When I was 13 I moved into my brother's bedroom, as it is an extension to the original house with an ensuite and is far larger than my old room. Originally it was a tiny box room with the entrance to the attic but was extended outwards. The attic entrance is always open, with a permanent set of metal ladders angled up into it. There's a picture of it here. The grey arch is where the original room ended. Within a few weeks of moving in I'd wake up in the middle of the night to see a figure staring down me, with a white head like a skull and formless black body. It would slowly move down to the foot of my bed and stare me until I moved, at which point it would sink into the floor, just sleep paralysis, right? And I'd beg to move into the room and had just got it set up so I wasn't going to leave. I didn't really talk about it to anyone, it gradually became less frequent over time. Eight years after this my brother mentioned at a get-together that he used to have a sleep paralysis demon when he lived in that room a half-joking, half-freaked out way to other people when the topic of them came up. He described the exact same thing, neither of us mentioned it to anybody else at the time it was happening so we have no explanation for us both experiencing the same thing, 
I am currently back from uni myself due to corona with that dark void in the ceiling in the corner of my room. I, F27, was training to be a nurse. Here in Germany you have to visit and practice in a lot of places. I was working at a hospice, a place where the terminal ill patients can stay until their last day. I was there for 8 weeks and was in my last year of studying. I was doing the round, checking on everyone, making sure they are not in pain, net any help or just a talk. One patient, a woman who was there for days, had a different breathing and I called her husband who was in the group room, don't know how to exactly describe it. She had her finals breaths, while her husband was holding her hand. It was peaceful and I know she was gone. At this moment another patient made a call, we had phones, which would ring if someone requested a nurse, I excused myself and left her room. Deep breath and going to the patient who was calling. I entered and smiled how can I help you? The man told me his guest would like to know where the exit was. I was a little confused, because he hadn't any visitors that day yet, so I asked, who do you mean? Maybe I just didn't see anyone because I was for half an hour with a dying patient, and he answered, well this lady here. She wants to know, where she could get out. I went pale, blood falling into my knees. I was shocked. I stuttered while opening the window, um, er, here is the way to the balcony and right to left, down the stairs is the door. I'll get you some water. Left the room, and was hardly breathing, leaning against the wall was standing there for 5 minutes. One of the nurses saw me and asked if I was okay. So I told her what just happened. All she did was to smile and say, yes, that kind of stuff happens a lot here. A few hours later I asked the man, if I guest found the way out. Him, yes, she did and said thank you for everything, had to process that for days, weeks, months. I still can't believe it. But I am sure since then, that we carry a soul. Also some nasty ghostly other things happened to me and my colleagues, while working in an ICU. A lot of weird stuff has happened to me in my life, so either I'm haunted by some trickster type of shit or stuff just tends to get strange naturally around me and I'm too stupid to figure out what's going on. I've chosen three things that I absolutely can't explain, and had other people witness it. The first story takes place at a friend's apartment around 15 years ago. We were watching TV and just talking and the subject turned to ghosts for some reason. I told her that I believed that there was something more in this world that we still didn't understand but she just laughed and said that she had never believed in that kind of stuff and never would. She then shouted for the ghosts in the room to show themselves, just to mess with me. She waited, smirking, for a few seconds and then we heard what sounded like a heartbeat. Like rhythmic thumping. We looked around for a second and found the source almost immediately. It was my purse. It was laying on the table in front of us, pulsating like a heart. I grabbed it and emptied it but we couldn't find anything that could have caused the weird heartbeat. The second story takes place around the same time, but in another friend's house. He had told me on several occasions that he often heard footsteps in his living room, but I figured that it probably was creaky floors or pipes since it was an old house. But one night when my sister and I were at his place, we heard them as well. It was clear as day, someone was walking. In heavy boots it sounded like, from his kitchen into his living room and stopped right in front of the couch we were sitting on. The last story happened to me and my dad when I used to live with him and my sister. Me and my dad were sitting in the living room and watching a movie one night. My sister was in her room studying, when sat in the living room you could see the hallway to the left that began at my sister's room, went past the living room and all the other rooms and ended by the office where the family computer was. Both me and my dad saw my sister walk past from her room to the office. We both turned and looked at her. Two minutes later we saw her again, walking the exact same direction. Me and my dad looked at each other and he pointed out how weird it was that we never saw her go the other way back, and if he saw her again he would ask her what she was doing. And sure enough, a few minutes later she walked again from her room to the office. My dad called out for her and asked her if she was in the office. She then walked out of her room again and said that no, why did he ask, we have no idea who or what we saw that night wandering the same route again and again, and my dad still can side ears at the weirdest thing he has ever experienced. It was around 3 am and I was on my computer in my mom's basement when I was 17. There was a fruit cellar door next to my desk. All of a sudden I hear three knocks coming from inside of the fruit cellar door. There was no other entrance to the fruit cellar. I freaked out and ran up the stairs and ran outside, 
thinking maybe some of my friends were playing a joke on my but it was the middle of winter and snow was falling and there were no footprints around my house and my mother was fast asleep. I got in my car and drove to my friend's house and moved to my own place shortly thereafter. 20 years later and I still won't go in that basement at night. When I was in second grade I was getting the mail and when I picked out a letter for me I got a flash of this lady who I had never seen before and I was like okay whatever. Turned out it was an image of my second grade teacher before I even met her on the first day of school, wearing the exact clothes I pictured. The letter was a welcome to class letter from her. Was delivering newspapers on my paper route when longtime customer pulled his car next to me and asked me to just give him his daily newspaper now because he was going on a long trip. I handed him his newspaper then skipped his house as I continued my route. The next day I was collecting the weekly fees, you used to have to go collect the money back then, no internet payment yet, and I went to his house to collect my fee. His wife answers and promptly complains that I missed her house on my deliveries the day before, I explained to her that her husband pulled up next to me, I told her what he said and that I gave him the paper. She started crying told me that he had died a couple weeks ago and it was obviously not possible that I spoke with her husband the day before, I know what I saw and nearly 30 years later I still think about that situation. I have no way to logically explain what happened and it still give me the creeps. When I was about 5 I was going down the stairs of my house when suddenly there was some sort of mist in front of me. It had what I can only assume were eyes, and all the colors from the room were being pulled into individual strands then sucked into the eyes like a black hole. I screamed, and it disappeared through the wall to the other side of the house where my younger brother was. He screamed shortly after I did. My mom was nearer to him, so she went to him first. When I got into the room where he was he was really scared and he kept on saying the eyes, the rainbow eyes. We hadn't talked, so he didn't know what I had just seen. My parents knew a priest so they brought him over and he did some sort of a blessing. We never had any issues after that. It was definitely very creepy. Worked as a tour guide in an old 18th century mansion and lots of unexplained things would happen quite regularly. This one time while I was with some guests in the former ballroom, a little boy asked his mother mommy why are their children crying upstairs? Of course nobody else could hear it but above us would have been the old nursery where two young girls died in the 19th century. Nursery was on the third floor and the entire level just had a very strange vibe to it. Still gives me the creeps thinking about it. When I was about 8 years old, my kitten Peter Chris, named after the KISS band member because she was a great Abby, got hit and killed by a car. I was devastated. I had rescued her with my older sister from a box in the rain. It was a miracle our parents let us keep her and her brother, Nigel. One day after school, my mother tells me that there had been a freak accident and that my kitten had died. I found out a few years later that she had been hit. Anyway. Later that night, I was laying in bed and I felt her kneading, or making biscuits as some may call it, on my legs. I looked back behind me, as I was laying on my stomach, only to see not a thing there. I laid back down and the feeling came back again. Every time I would look behind me, it stopped. To this day, I still believe it was her. Not so much supernatural but there is these two pitch black dogs that occasionally run full speed around my yard and I think they might be wild as they just randomly howl from the direction of the swamp that's near my house at night. As for what they look like they look stocky and muscular like a pit bull or boxer and they have the short hair of a pit bull slash boxer but they are long legged and they have no fear of humans. When I was a kid, I lived in this tiny two bedroom apartment with my mom and sister. For whatever reason. I used to sleep on the couch in the living room, wake up at 3 am and watch anime while I get ready for school and then sleep for a few more hours. I honestly don't remember why I used to do this. Anyways, one night I'm awake, it was probably around 2 or 3 am, and all of a sudden someone starts banging on the window and screaming. I mean like, hysterically. It scared the absolute shit out of me. This went on for a good couple of minutes before it just stopped. The weirdest part was it didn't wake up my mom, my sister or even the neighbors, and when I asked if they heard anything they told me no. Honestly maybe it was just my imagination or some crazy old person but I'll never know. Another incident that happened to me was when I was in middle school living in a house in the middle of nowhere with my family. It was a weekend and of course I was sleeping in. My parents always hated that and would wake me up all the time. So when I heard this voice in my ear say wake up. Naturally. I wake up thinking it's my mom or something, but when I open my eyes, 
No one was there or in my room. So I thought, maybe they came in a few minutes ago and I'm just now waking up. Curious, I asked them if they tried to wake me up this morning. They both said no. To this day, I'm not sure if I was just hearing things or what but still freaks me out. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.